Welcome y'all, Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thanks so much for joining us. We got a good one for you today. We're going to be talking about lime. We're going to be talking about ag lime. We're going to be talking about pelleted lime. We're going to be talking about liquid lime. My name is Wes. I run the channel DIY Food Plot Pro. I've got a Bachelor of Science degree in Agronomy, which is plant and land science. I farm for a living and I have a 1800 acre whitetail deer hunting outfit in Western Kentucky where we are not allowed to bait. So we rely heavily on food plots. That's what we do on this channel. I show you how to food plot. I show you all the little details involved. So when we start talking about lime, there are three major types that are sold to food plotters right now. They are agricultural lime, pelleted lime, and they're liquid lime. I'm gonna go through this entire process and I think this is going to be extremely helpful to every food plotter out there. I have really dove deep down into the research. I have got a ton of information for you guys that I think y'all are going to find extremely, extremely helpful. There's a lot of rumors going around out there. We are going to put them to rest right now. Ag lime, if you've never seen it, comes in a loose powdery substance. It is phenomenal at changing the soil pH. It has done this for hundreds of years successfully. It's, it is proven product that works every single time. The downsides of ag lime, we all know it's a pain in the butt to spread. It will hollow itself out, but there is no question at its effectiveness. It will change the soil pH for the longest amount of time, three, four, possibly even five years, depending on what you're using that soil for, you can see a gradual raise, an elevated pH, and then a gradual decline in the pH over one limestone application. Usually for ag lime, we're looking at one ton raises the soil pH one point. Pretty cut and dry simple. If you're at 5.0, we wanna be at 7.0, you're gonna add two tons of lime per acre of agricultural lime, and that's gonna get you to your goal of seven. Now, for many of you, you may not may wonder, why are we looking at seven? Seven is where the maximum amount of nutrients can get up took from that plant. Let me explain this really simple and easy. When we look at the scale of soil acidity versus the amount of nutrients that are being used, the scale starts from one to 14. Many nutrients like to be on the low end. Many nutrients like to be on the high end. The reason we shoot for seven, that is kind of like middle of the road if you look at it. So we try to stay right in the center of that 6.5 to seven range. That's where the maximum amount of nutrients all the way across the board can get up to. The benefits of ag lime are it's dirt cheap, okay? I can get a full 23 to 26 tons of ag lime delivered to my food plot for about 500 bucks. So you're talking dirt cheap, but it is extremely difficult to spread if you don't have the spreading equipment. I'm not going to lie about that. I have done that successfully before with a three-point spreader, but it is extremely difficult. But it is the cheapest option out there for us and the best long-term solution. Let's move on to pelleted lime. Pelleted lime is ground up ag lime that has essentially been glued together into a ball. What the market is for pelleted lime, it's easy. You can spread it super easy on any type of spreader regardless. So whether that's a tractor spreader, whether that's a ranger spreader like I've got, any of those applications, you can spread pelleted lime with pretty easily. Not a whole lot to it. The downside of pelleted lime is it's expensive. Obviously, it's about $5 a bag for a 40-pound bag. So when you start talking ton per acre, you're talking a significant dollar amount, a significant amount of pounds to be able to spread out there. But it is so much easier to do than agricultural lime. That's the market for pelleted lime. Does pelleted lime work as well as ag lime? Yes, pelleted lime is ag lime. That is the exact same product. That is just glued into small pieces to make it super easy to handle. It's a lot easier to handle than agricultural lime is, but it is the same thing. It is going to give you a pH rise. No question about it, it is going to do that for you. For years, the old saying was, you can use 10% of whatever they say for ag lime to your pelleted lime, and that's gonna be the same amount. I really started diving into this 
and I found that not to be true. Every Lime product is going to have a CCE. If you get it on a truckload, you can go to your state and they are going to have an average CCE for the quarry that you brought that out of. What is that CCE? Calcium carbonate equivalent. Okay, basically what that is, is how pure a product do you have? 100%, that's the standard. Limestone quarries in Kentucky run 0.67. That's their average. In order for you to be able to use less pelleted lime on a food plot, you have got to have a significant difference in the CCE. If the, I hope that makes sense. So let's say from your home quarry, it's 50% CCE and you are buying pelleted lime that is 100% CCE. You can use half of that recommended amount. So if it's, if it's calling for a ton of ag lime, 1,000 pounds of the pelleted lime would be the equivalent. The problem that I got into is my pelleted lime was the same CCE as my ag lime, 67%. For me, there was no cutting back on the amount of pelleted lime I was putting. It was the exact same amount. When I started doing the math and really diving into these numbers, it was the exact same amount of ag lime that I needed pelleted lime. There are instances where you can put less pelleted lime than ag lime, but you have to know those numbers. And that starts by flipping that bag over and looking at that CCE. The deal with pelleted lime is it's really small particles and they react very quickly. As opposed to ag lime, ag lime has multiple different sizes in that load of ag lime. So when you spread ag lime, it may not look like it, but you're spreading several different sizes of limestone out there on your food plot. When you spread that limestone application, your really small parts react very quickly and they're gonna start neutralizing the soil acidity quickly. Then you've got your medium sized parts. They're gonna have to wait till they break down. And then you've got your large particles and they're gonna even take longer to break down. So that's why you get this gradual increase in soil pH over a longer period of time because you have multiple different sizes where pelleted lime, everything should be the same size. You should get a quicker reaction out of pelleted lime, but you're also going to get a shorter reaction period. You don't have any of those big particles out there that are going to change that and continue changing over a long period of time. You're more on a scale like this with pelleted lime where your ag lime, you're more on a a drawn out scale. We're gonna talk about liquid lime. Liquid lime is a product that has been marketed to food plotters because it solves a real issue for food plotters. This makes it super, super simple to raise your soil pH with this liquid lime. When we look at liquid lime, there's a couple different things that we need to look at. The active ingredients. That is the most important part of this entire process. If your liquid lime is made up of calcium chloride, calcium chloride does not change the acidity in the soil. All these companies push calcium, calcium, calcium. Calcium has nothing to do with changing the soil acidity. It's the carbonate that takes the hydrogen ions out of the soil and reduces the soil acidity. Has nothing at all to do with calcium. Calcium chloride, that's a salt. That has nothing to do with changing the soil pH in any shape, form, or fashion. When you are getting marketed by these groups that say, hey, this product's super easy to, to put on, it is super simple, and it raises the soil pH to the equivalent of 2,000 pounds of agricultural lime. No, it doesn't. If it's calcium chloride, no, it doesn't. You don't have to take my word for it. All you got to do is look on Google. Does calcium chloride raise the soil pH? You're going to quickly find that answer is no. It has nothing to do with that process. It's not going to raise the soil pH. It is a product that has been widely marketed, giving us something that we want, that we need, that we can grasp onto with our all our hopes and dreams. Man, this is so much easier. You throw that in your sprayer and you're going to town. Spray your field and that's the equivalent of 2,000 pounds of agricultural lime, pat myself on the back, head back to the house. No, sorry, that ain't how it works. There are liquid products out there that contain calcium carbonate. That is going to change your soil pH. Now, the problem with these is 
you're looking at two and a half gallons of calcium carbonate. Will they change the soil pH? Yes, they will. Is one jug going to equal 2,000 pounds of agricultural lime? Absolutely not. No way. Don't even think about it. If I was going to use that product, I'm not going to, but if I was going to, I would have to calculate that all out, the CCE, the pounds, and I would have to figure out how much is needed to do the, to get me 2,000 pounds of agricultural lime. Now, they're going to say, all oh, this is screened in. It's quicker to be absorbed. Yes, it is. That's true. It's, it's a smaller screen. It's a finer screen that is going to react with the soil quicker. You're still just putting 13 pounds per acre out there versus 2,000 pounds or 4,000 pounds. It's a huge, huge difference. It just doesn't have the availability to take, convert those hydrogen ions uh, and make the soil less acidic. It's going to work to an extent, but the amount that you're going to have to use is a ridiculous amount to equal that 2,000 pounds of agricultural lime. No way one bottle is going to do what 2,000 pounds of agricultural lime do. Okay, let's go ahead and get to recommendations. I know a lot of food plotters can't get a big lime truck to their food plots. For those of us that can, I think that's the way to go. I would rather dump a triaxial load of lime right next to my food plot, shuffle that into my three-point spreader. Even if I can only get a couple hundred pounds at a time, spread it out, and it's going to work. Is it going to work great? No. Is it going to work? Yes. I had really good luck with it. I did mine as soon as... The truck was there, so I didn't let it get rained on. I immediately went out and I spread it, and it worked reasonably well. It didn't work great, but it worked okay. For those of you who have no way of getting a big lime truck to your farm, or maybe you don't have a three-point spreader to spread with, I'm looking at pelleted lime. That's the only other option that we have at this point. So what do I recommend? Look at your CCE and see what that says. If you need two tons of lime, if you are planting an alfalfa food plot and it is absolutely critical that your soil pH is 7.0 because you can't screw around with alfalfa, it has to be right. I'm gonna put that amount of pelleted lime that it calls for on the CCE. So if it calls for 2,000 pounds an acre, I'm putting 2,000 pounds of pelleted lime per acre. And I'm getting into a yearly soil test. Every single spring, if I apply it in the spring, 12 months later, I am back out there with my soil probe again, taking soil samples and seeing what that pH is. Now, for the other food plots, corn, soybeans, brassicas, clovers, uh, oats, cereal rye, winter wheat, all those type of things where pH is still important, but it's nowhere near as important as it is for that alfalfa. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put about a half a rate down. If my soil test is telling me 2,000 pounds per acre, I'm going to put about 1,000. I'm also going to start doing a yearly soil test. You're going to see how much your usage is going down every year when you get into a yearly program of testing your soil pH. One of the biggest drawdowns of the soil pH, obviously it's natural. Our natural soil pH, that's where the soil wants to be. But one of the biggest kickers of dropping the soil pH down is high synthetic fertilizer in the form of nitrogen, ammonium. When we're putting a heavy loads of nitrogen on a food plot, as is the case for brassicas and corn, those are the two biggest ones that we're using the most nitrogen on. You can expect a drop just from that amount of nitrogen that you're putting out there. That's just part of it. There's no way around that. So you are going to need to monitor that level over time and figure out how much your pH is dropping. It's going to be different than what mine is. Now, if you're at 4.3, you've got your work cut out to you for pelleted lime. You've got to roll the coal to her. That's the only way there is to it. My natural soil pH is running 5.3 to 5.7. So I'm about 1.5 away from where I need to be, which is about 3,000 pounds of lime per acre. I'm going to put 1,500 pounds of pelleted on there and we're gonna call that good enough for this year. That's gonna take me from, if I'm at 5.7, that's gonna bring me up, you know, roughly a point, might not quite be a point, but somewhere in that, 
that's going to get me into the low sixes, low to mid sixes. I'm in good shape right there. Use your Peloton line if you can't get those trucks in. It's really, really important. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you found this video helpful. I appreciate each and every one of you. Smash that like and subscribe button if you hadn't already.